Hey guys, how are you? How crazy, right? That our first day back after Thanksgiving break. And here I am at home because the Rona got my family. So um, we're all good. We're doing well. I hope that you are good. I know that it's affected some of your families as well, but I hope that you are good. So I miss you. I'm really bummed that I'm not there with you right now. These are like my favorite three weeks. Well, some of my favorite three weeks of the whole school year. Um, I love the holidays and I wish I was with you. So hopefully I will see you very soon. So what we're going to do is start chapter five. So you should have your whole packet, your new gold card. This whole chapter is a mid-year review. So they are all problems that we have done before. I, I grabbed them and put them together in a new chapter. And so hopefully you feel very confident as we go through. What we'll do is I will record the lesson. And my hope for you is that you are able to understand it, recognize it, and then do it on your own. So if you are able to do that, that's fantastic. You can then check your answers by the answer key that I will post, um, or you can watch the video and see that you are doing it the proper way. Um, another thing that you could do is you could just mute me and do it on your own and then glance up and check as I'm working to see if you are doing the same steps or pause and then come back. Or if you just simply miss the sound of my voice, then <laughs> you can just keep working with me the whole time, which would be great as well. Okay, so we are going to get started. Let me let myself in from the waiting room. And then, oh, I need to make sure I can share my screen. Oh, I don't need to chat with myself. I'm already at home totally talking to myself. So it's just, uh, these are the times, right? And I like to think that I'm so tech savvy. So <laughs> hopefully that continues. All right, sharing my screen here and share. I have my handy dandy stylus, which I don't know if you can see it, but look, it's becoming like a little, probably shouldn't mess with it. It's like a Pac-Man over there. Can you see it? So yeah, it's just, it's where now this is my stylus. Mrs. Howe gave me way back in March when we did that shut down and it has just been well used, I guess. So Anyway, here we are. Let me flap my Chromebook. Here we are, math chapter five. Okay. It still has the references to the red resource book. Do you have yours? I hope that you are using it and you uh, use that because it really is a good resource. Your other fantastic resource is going to be your math notes, okay? So ultimately, um, I hope that this is a good review for you. And if it's not a review and you feel like you've never seen it before, then hopefully you're able to understand through the video. Okie doke. Here we go, classwork 5.1. 1. 3C, number one says, which equations represent a non-linear function? All right, so we need to see, does it fit into slope-intercept form? Can we have um, a slope that is consistent? What is it going to be? All right, so let's do it problem by problem. And most likely because of the limits that I have for my screen, ooh, I might have to erase. So let's give it a go here. So for A, where's my annotation? Oh, now I gotta move it down. All right, so for A, and I want a different color pen. Let's use blue and thicker. All right, we are going to put this into slope intercept form. So of course, Slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b. Okay, and here is what we are trying to match. We have a 2x 
plus 3y equals 6. Oh, I wasn't able to line up my equal sign. You know, that bugs me. <laughs> it's all right. I'll get over it. All right. So we need to solve for y and see if it is slope intercept form y equals mx plus b. So we need to get the y by itself. We are going to add the opposite of 2x. And I can look at that and I know that is going to be my slope. So now we have 3y equals negative 2x plus 6. So it's a negative or a downhill slope. Divide each thing by 3. Gives me y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 2. And looking at that, yes, it does match my slope intercept. I have a slope of negative 2 thirds and a y intercept of 2. So Yes, this one is linear. So you're just going to write linear. Yes. Okay. Now for B, Y equals 5 over X. Well, that does not match. Does not match Y equals MX plus B. So I can look at that right now and say B is not linear. So B, ooh. This is like a mess on here. I did not plan this well. Y equals five over X. Well, that does not match our Y equals MX plus B. So we're going to say non-linear for B. Linear. And that brings us to C. Ooh. X squared plus Y equals six. So we need to put it y equals mx plus b. So we're going to add a negative x squared to each side. Gives us y equals negative x squared plus 6. Okay, so the x squared is what's confusing, right? With the squared, yes, it is a function. A function means that for every one input of x, there's one output of y. And that works with x being squared. It, got, it does, you remember what this is called? Gives us a parabola. So where this is how we are going to graph it. Or that's just what it looks like. It's not the actual graph of this one. So it is a function. However, our question was asking, which equations represent a non-linear function? Okay, so it is a function, but linear means it's a straight line. Linear goes into the y equals mx plus b. So this is not a straight line, it's parabola. So that is non-linear, okay? So for our question, which represents a non-linear function? Answer is going to be b and c. All right, hopefully your work is neater than mine. That was a really messy way to start out, but it's okay. All right, so let me erase all of this. Oh, oh, where's my eraser? There it is. Okay. Ooh. Erasing could be what is tearing apart my stylus. Okay, number two says make an input output table to create a rela relation that is a function and one that is not a function. Okay, so I want to remind you, a function has one input, which is x, for one output that is y. Okay, so an xy table, it's number two. So we have x and y. And oh, oops, come on. There we go, we're back. And X and Y. Okay, so we have two, uh, two tables. So we want one that is a function. So this is the function. And one that is not a function, not a function. Okay. All right. So for our values, 
for a function, it's going to have a standard increase, one input, one output. Let me get another color. We'll be all patriotic here. So let's say that for my inputs, I simply did one, two, three, four. Then for my outputs, it, they would just need to be individual. So maybe we're going to double two, four, six, and eight. So one input, one output. Now, for it to be not a function, remember the easiest way to do one that is not a function is it has to have something that uh, makes it a vertical line because it's that dirty word undefined is with a the zero on the bottom and it can't have that. So if we have a function that looks like this, this spot right here where it's the vertical line makes it not a function because it has the same input of x but multiple values for y multiple outputs so that's when it doesn't work so if we did our same one two three four if we were to have some y values that were the same number for the different values or i'm sorry uh oh erase that we want the same inputs, let me think here. Yes, the same inputs, they have different outputs. Oh my goodness, I already messed up on number two. Ah. All right, that's okay. So here's my inputs, but if we always did, so looking at this one here, that's maybe an input of two, 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 and then my Y values are different. So three, four, five, and six. Oh, I hope I didn't confuse you on that one. Ultimately, if we're looking right here. If this is two for X, then this continues up at a straight line. It's going to give us a slope that is undefined. So it's not a function, okay? All right, number three, good old, what is this? Do you remember? What theorem? Pythagorean, yes, all right. Oh, I got crazy eraser. There we go. All right, I wish I had like a all over eraser, but I'm sure there is. I just don't know how to do it. Number three, Pythagorean. So I'm gonna remind you Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. c is always directly across from the right angle. And that makes, it doesn't matter which one's a and which one's b, but they're the two legs that are attached to the right angle. Okay, so for this we have, um, if six is a, so six squared plus eight squared equals c squared, that gives us 36 plus 64, and look how convenient, 36 plus 64 is 100. Take the square root, and when we say square root, what times itself gives us 100, and that will be 10. So C is 10. Love Pythagorean, easy, easy concept. All right, so that gets us through our classwork and into our homework, which I don't have to erase for that. I can simply go to the next slide. All right, so what we are doing, so if you have your packet in front of you and you're looking at these, oh, and I'm scribbling on my screen, there we go, um, is we are finding solutions to see if it has one solution no solutions or infinite solutions. So I want to remind you, if it has one solution, it means that on our graph, if this is our graph, one solution means that two different lines, wherever they intersect, right there is the solution. Okay, so the solution means that they have one point that they both share, one XY coordinate that falls on both lines. That's one solution, okay? If there is no solution, then that means that we have two 
parallel lines and they go on forever and ever and they never cross, that means they don't have any points that they share, they're parallel lines. Now with that, if we have two lines that have infinite solutions, it means that they're the same line. Infinite solutions means every single point or XY coordinate that is on this line is also going to be on this line. So it just means that the lines fall on the same spot and they're ultimately the same line. Okay, so you're going to be solving each of these. Uh, you guys have gotten really good at these. So I'm hoping that you are comfortable uh, with these. All right, so number one, yes, you have to write it on your paper. Number one, 3x plus, that's an x, uh, plus 15 equals three times x plus five. We're going to distribute that three, gives us three x plus 15 equals three x plus 15. Well, duh, we can look at it and we see it's the same. Let's finish it out. We're gonna add the opposite, add a negative three X. The reason we do the three X is because then it disappears from both sides, saves us a step, but you could do minus 15 and then solve down to X or solve down to three either way. Okay, what this does gives us 15 equals 15. Therefore, it is in Infinite. That's our answer. Okay. Oh, and I don't need to erase because I put everything else on this slide here. All right. It does go to nine system of linear equations, which is what we're doing right now. Okay. Number two. Maybe if I put this up, I can see it a little better. All right. Okay, number two. That work? Yeah, that looks good. Two is 5x minus 7 equals 4x minus 1. Okay, so let's solve this one down. Um, I see that I have a 5x and a 4x, so those are different. So is my negative 7 and my negative 1. We're going to add the opposite on both of those. And let's go ahead and get the 7 to the other side. So to add the opposite, I'm going to add a positive 7. Whatever I do to one side, I do to the other side. Those cancel out. Leaves me 5x equals 4x. 7 and a negative 1 gives me a positive 6. Now let's get our x's together. Plus negative 4. Plus negative 4x. 5x and a negative 4x leaves me with 1x equals 6. So if you get x equals 6, that means that there is 1 solution. Okay, and here is my answer here. Okay. If I make it bigger to erase, it might go faster. Not too bad. Okay, so we are done at number two. Number three, negative three times two X minus three equals negative six X plus nine. I'm going to distribute my negative three there in there. So negative three times two X gives me negative six X and negative times a negative. So negative three times negative three gives me a positive nine equals negative six X plus nine. I can see that they're the same, which means it will be infinite solutions. So I'm gonna add the opposite plus six X. 
leaves me with nine equals nine, since both of those cancel out. And that gives me infinite. Or let's see if I can do them. They're not too bad. All right. Well, I was thinking I could fit number four. I'll just erase it. Okay, so remember, if I'm going way too fast, you just have to pause it in between each and then you can get it down. Okay. It's hard because, uh, all right, I talk to myself all the time, but this is different. Yes. <laughs> all right, so that was number three. Okay, now we are on number four. Oh, did we have that one? Yes, we have that one. All right. I'll mark them off on our answer key. All right, number four. Let's see if I can make it a little bigger. Oh, that's nice. Okay, four. Six times seven X plus seven equals seven times, oh, getting squirrely. Six X plus six. Okay, so we have two sides that we're going to distribute on each. Here and here, and here and here. Okay, so six times seven is 42. That gives me 42x. And six times seven again, plus 42. Well, look over here, so tricky. Seven times six, commutative property, 42x plus 42. Okay, easy peas. We're going to go ahead and add the opposite. So subtract uh, negative 42 gives us 42 equals 42. Therefore, it is infinitive solutions. Infinitive. I think I can do a better infinity sign on my little touch screen and stylus and I can normally on paper. Woo, go me. <laughs> All right, see, talking to myself, right? And there's that answer there. All right. Oh, I just had an epiphany. I can erase, since it's a touch screen Chromebook, erase with my finger and save my stylus. Look at all these breakthroughs I'm getting to with being quarantined at home, right? All right, you guys seen The Shining? Glad our weather is nice, otherwise it'd be totally The Shining around here. <laughs> all right, number five. Number five is whew, three minus four X equals negative seven minus four X. Okay, so we have a couple of subtraction. This is just a really ugly three. So we are gonna fix that. Okay, add the opposite. Plus a negative four X plus a negative four X. Okay, so looking at this, I can see we have some differences. Let's see what happens. Add the opposite. So we're going to add four X to both sides. And then what does it leave us with? Three and negative seven. And of course, three is not the same as negative seven. So this means there are no solutions. Okay, and there it is right here. Good. And that was five. Oops. Now, erase. oh, that's not an eraser. There we go. All right, a couple more. Number six. I have some things to distribute. Six times five minus two X equals negative four, three X plus one. All right, pretend you are one of Santa's elves distributing to everybody inside the parentheses. <laughs> or you can be Oprah, it doesn't matter. All right, so we're gonna distribute here, distribute here. I can hear your eyes rolling and I like it. 
<laughs> All right, so our first distributive, six times five gives us 30. Six times negative two X gives us a negative 12 X equals negative four times three X is negative 12 X and a negative four times a positive one gives us a negative four. Okay, so now let's get the 12 X's out of there and see what it leaves us. Add the opposite, which would be 12 X positive. Those cancel out, leaving us with a 30 and a negative four. Those are not equal, no solution. So maybe you're a naughty elf because when you distributed, left us with no solution. <laughs> All right. All right, I know it's really not, it's not even a corny joke. They were just bad jokes. It's all right. All right, almost there. Oh, I forgot I was gonna erase with my finger. Two left and two answers. Let's see what we have got. Number seven, two X plus one equals two X minus one. Oh, so easy. Let's add the opposite. One is not the same as negative one. No solution. This one here. No solution for you. Seven. So sorry. So really, if there's no solution, that's really what we are wanting to have with our social distancing. No contact point, stay parallel, never intersect. Another bad one, right? But it's cornier and it's a little bit more hip with the times. See, I told you I'm going crazy over here. All right, number eight. <laughs> Two times X plus four equals negative five X plus one. We're going to distribute. See if this has been a good equation this year and gets to have a solution. Two X plus eight equals negative five X plus one. All right, let's get our X's together. Always weird to get the X's together for the holidays, I know. And that's going to leave us 7x plus 8 equals 1. One's the loneliest number. So let's send over 8. So we're going to add the opposite. Gives us, oh, I'm running out of room here. Um, 7x, let's see, leaves us 7x on this side. Negative 7 over here. Divide both by seven gives us X equals negative one, yay! One solution right here. All right, so happy ending for number eight. We have a solution. All right, number nine, system of linear equations. I kind of, here, did you need to see that one? I'll give you a couple of seconds or just pause. Okay, number nine, we're going to solve the system of equations, which means we're going to come up with an X and a Y. And with that solution, it's actually um, an X, Y coordinate. So that's the, the solving a system. That means, remember, we have, oh, come on, there it is. We have one spot, that would be the solution right there, the spot where they meet. And this is really the theme of all of the holiday Hallmark or um, Lifetime movies, right? Where they too, they happen to meet in the cutesy little town where the snow's falling and there's all the little boutiques and oh, he happens to be a prince. There they go, there are two lines intersect right there and they live happily ever after. 
Um, I have not got to watch any of the uh, holiday movies yet. So hopefully that happens soon. But, you know, my whole family is here at home and apparently I'm the only one into those cheesy movies, right? But I do love them. All right. Enough about the cheesy movies. Let's solve the system of linear equations. So step one, do you remember, do you remember what it is? You have to solve for y or put into slope intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. Okay, so our first one, all set. This one here, we need to do. So let's move this up here. We have 5x plus y equals 1. Easy, we just need to get the 5x on the other side. And we do that by adding the opposite. Oops, there we go add the opposite. So it's going to be y equals negative 5x plus 1. So now we're going to set them equal to each other because if y equals y, then these can both be equal to each other as well. So we have negative 5x minus 2 and we set that equal to um, over here negative 5x plus 1. Oh, no, it's going to mess up my Hallmark movie, my Lifetime original. Add the opposite. Those cancel out. Oh, my goodness. No solution. So sad. <laughs> All right. Bad analogy because in the Lifetime movies, they always end up happy ending. I only watch happy endings, by the way. Okay, that's it. 5.1. Um, I know you guys don't do this, but thumbs up if you totally remember. It was easy peasy. Thumbs down. Did we ever even do this this year? Ah! Or eh, I remember it, but I'm glad I had some practice. And I'm looking in the camera as if I can see your thumbs up. I hope it was all thumbs up. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, this video is available and this is how our lessons will be every day. It's very different without um, being in the same room with you. I hope you know how much I do miss you and uh, I hope that you are doing well. When you are finished with this, what you're going to do is your next assignment, which is uh, Science Generation Genius. Okay, so uh, stay safe and stay healthy. And as you go through your day, remember who you are, remember what you stand for and lead by example. I miss you guys. Bye-bye.